Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining today's live webinar. My name is Glavina and I am your host for today. Companies have realized how important it is to right size resources in the cloud to optimize cloud infrastructure and the chief cost difference in today's modern architectures and containerized applications. While organizations are looking at hosting its data in a robust, secure and managed cloud infrastructure, Tracking costs and cost allocations have been some of the noted challenges. With this context, Dun & Bradstreet, in collaboration with Nivius Solutions and Google Cloud, is pleased to host a webinar on infrastructural innovation, unlocking the value of cloud optimization for better costs. The webinar would focus on the following points of discussion. Top areas on reducing avoidable cloud costs and improving efficiency. The next thing that we would be discussing is about the best practices to maximize cloud ROI. Key considerations while mitigating risk with GCP infrastructures. Navigating the GCP infrastructure discovery tool for future cloud. Opportunities and benefits of Stratozone GCP assessment or automation and case study on how businesses are benefiting from cost optimization, leveraging Stratozone. Before we start the session, I request you all to be in a good network zone for a seamless experience. We encourage you to ask more questions during the session. We request you to please type your queries in the questions section. These will be taken up Q&A session. A couple of tips and a small request. We want to know you better. Hence, mention your name and your organization's name when you post your questions. You can also mention the name of the person you are directing the question to. Now, let's take a look at the flow of this session. Please refer to the agenda which is displayed on your screen. Actually, it's a promising agenda with a Slide of speakers. I would like to take this opportunity once to welcome and thank everyone for being part of this virtual. Now, let's kick start with the speaker of the day. I would like to take this opportunity and invite Mr. Ravi Ramchandran, partner engineer at Google Cloud, to the tone for this session. Over to Mr. Ramchandran. Yeah, thank you, Glavina. And uh, thank you for setting this up. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending upon the time zone. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to have a conversation on the very important topic in the current economic situation that the world is seeing. And it's a pretty relevant topic to discuss through. And we have the partner with us, Nevius, who essentially has been one of the you know flag bearers in handling these situations and help the customer navigate the situation really well, at the same time adopting to the cloud. So I'll just present my screen. Do let me know once it's available. Yes, we are able to see a screen. Yes, sir. We are able to see it. Awesome. Give me a moment. Thank you. So having said this, uh, we just want to have a quick overview of the Google Cloud benefits that it brings to the enterprise because we are one of the leading CSPs, cloud service providers in the market and enterprises are looking up to Google for a couple of topics. One of them, of course, we bring in innovation into the cloud. And second is we being open source at the heart and at the core. So these are five principles that are actually listed out from a Google Cloud framework. And you would see in every product that we have, every solution that we built, and every conversation that we have with the customer, you would see each one of the five elements are actually inherent in the solutions that we bring into the table. I mean, I'll just call out the top two. One is being the open cloud. So the customers has the privilege and the liberty to go ahead and have the services from multiple cloud providers. It could be compete. It could be on-premise. And we have tools and mechanisms to ensure that customer gets a seamless experience, whether it be the multi-cloud or a hybrid. And of course, in the days to come, you would see edge compute also becoming the norm of the day. Second piece is around security. We, of course, uh, deliver services with security in mind. 
from the from the network to the infrastructure all the way to the device layer that's the time you know our entire security portfolio runs across three themes workforce workload and of course the workspace piece of it so that the entire security gambit is actually being taken care of and you would have seen yesterday's press release around median which is actually one of the uh, acquisitions that we had recently had that would essentially strengthen our security portfolio there and the last piece is around the intelligence the tools that we develop and the solutions that we create are no longer infra-centric because we have seen that the world and the enterprise requirements have moved up the stack from being infra-centric to be essentially application-centric. What it essentially means is most of the services that we build are actually serverless. So the customer essentially can focus on the managed services piece of it and experience the service by themselves. It could be a managed database, it could be a managed data warehousing solution or with inbuilt AI and ML. And the entire piece of uh, cost advantage which is being spoken today is actually built around AIML itself, which is actually called as Active Assist. So having said this, we come to the next piece of the conversation. And of course, we at Google and, uh, and Nevius would welcome feedback for improvements or any questions and keep them going through the conversation or at the end of the conversation. And we'll be happy to help you to the journey that we would jointly take it through. Second piece that uh, second piece that actually brings the power of Google is the power of one Google. So beyond the Google Cloud services, you would have known Google for all the services that is actually being shown on the slide. It could be YouTube, it could be around the Maps, or it could be around the Chrome Chrome, Chrome ecosystem, which is becoming really powerful. And of course, uh, you have search and ads in place. So, uh, so, so you, we have seen cases where the customer starts the journey with Google Cloud, but of course then, you know, gets into map conversation or also, also speaks to us about the Chrome integration because it becomes a key piece when you talk about workspace integration. So that's around the Google uh, piece of it. And this is the journey that we see with the customers, right? The customers, let us say in 2008 or 10, would have started from the bottom of the pyramid where virtualization was the norm of the day. And all the enterprises were actually moving up the ladder from uh, to a dedicated hard hardware to a virtualized era. So that's the bottom of the stack, which, which possibly most of the enterprises in the in the market would have already achieved. And by say 2012-14, that's the time the cloud service providers became the norm of the day, and then enterprises began to migrate to the cloud. But they would largely migrate a like-to-like -like migration, like a VMware getting migrated to the cloud. That's the time we call it as the infrastructure cloud era, which is actually a subset of the on-premise migration. That's the time you see the customers are as the, the the pyramid is actually tapering towards the top. Now, what we experience today as we speak or in 2022 is a transformation cloud era. So transformation cloud era doesn't mean that a pure lift and shift, which is actually getting taking part in a customer's automation journey or a digital journey. So we essentially are looking at business enablers or product creations with the customer so that it's not just a lift and shift as being seen in the earlier decade, but possibly helping the customer in the digital journey of the customer's end customer requirement. So that's the cloud transformation era that we're looking at, which actually merges to our mission statement. Our mission statement is actually on the screen, which is largely to say that we are here to transform digitally the customer's business. The business could be an SMB, it could be a large enterprise, it could be a government. The, the business could be a digital native or it could be a traditional one. And we at Google, at Google Cloud are essentially focused to keep the customer on the journey and help him win the entire migration journey. It could be, the, so we, we call it internally as the theme being, you know, meet the customer where the customer is. So that the customer is in a virtualization journey, help him through the through that journey. If the customer is, is moving from virtualization to say containerized workload. So we have the, we have a next uh, framework for that. So essentially we, we are trying to meet the customer where he is. So that's on the entire Google mission that we have. Now coming to the uh, theme of the conversation. So the, the aspects on the left, right, one trillion and of course 43%, these are one of the aspects that you know keeps the growth of cloud really high. And of course, that's a very nice uh, scenario to be in. But what you know is actually concerning the uh, the customers is, is the is the topics on the right, which is actually the 30% and the 80%. So these are conversations that you know we would uh, deep dive today along with the Nevius team and actually have a focused conversation around that. The, 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 the reports clearly state that, you know, there's about 30% of uh, workloads that are actually getting wasted. What it essentially means is the customer, you know, does a lift and shift. So let us say it's a one is to four or a 
you know, uh, four is to sixteen kind of a workload, which is for a cloud to for a, for a memory to compute ratio. The customer moves it as is on the on the on the cloud, and and we realize that the either the memory is short utilized or possibly the core itself is short utilized. So in this case, we we see that there's a clear wastage of resources on the cloud because the customer has made a clear lift and shift without actually making an assessment. So we of course would have you know intelligent tools which are actually built up, and our partner Nevius here essentially uh, you know uh, is is a premium partner who essentially makes these services available for the customer. So the customer can make a right decision when he moves to the cloud. So you know the Nevius team would work through the stratosome conversation as we move ahead. The second piece is on the 80 percent. What is believed that 80 percent of the CIOs, the the stats in the survey clearly states that 80 percent of the CIOs clearly see that the, the the vision which they have migrated to the cloud is actually not getting achieved. So they are still feeling that the the cloud investments aren't fully uh, to the point wherein they get the desired benefits. Now, why why do they feel so? Is actually being spoken on the next slide. On the on the left side is actually various reasons why the CIO feels that uh, you know call, uh, the, the the cloud journey hasn't yielded results to the way that they have thought through. One you know let us say if the survey was taken back in 2015 or 16, you would have seen the second one from top, which is actually lighter blue, which is actually migration from on-premise to the cloud as a top priority. But here we are in an uh, era of digital transformation. We have seen that the enterprises have taken the first step, but at the same time, what we have realized is the enterprises haven't used the cost optimization to the benefit. So they don't see the benefits of cost optimization in the cloud even after migrating to it. So that's one of the key worries that is, you know, standing on top of the uh, enterprise's uh, mind and is actually bothering them. And the macroeconomic situation outside essentially is making it much more pressing for the enterprises to think through really well because of the situation that we see around. And we at Google Cloud are more than happy to serve the customer to help them, you know, save the dollar. And we are more than happy to see them optimize the cost so that they help themselves, and we are help, and uh, we are essentially helping here, helping them to, uh, you know, get through the journey and the phase that we are in. On the right is the the, the credibility or the knowledge of the customer basis, the feedback that we have received basis the same survey, and it's understood that most of the customers are still to understand the various concepts of cloud optimization and the various tools available. It could be automated and manual. And you see less and less customers are using automated ways. The automated ways are largely considered to be proactive ones, and the manual ones are considered to be largely reactive ones. Why do we feel so is the conversation that we will have in the next slide. That brings us to the conversation of FinOps. So FinOps is actually one of the terms that has been actually coined in the entire cloud journey so that the customer sees the real value that they bring into the table. This is actually a cultural shift in the way the entire, uh, you know, the commercial operations needs to be seen by the customer, and it's a new discipline and framework. In the first 12 framework, it was largely an IT guy's problem to look at the entire, uh, you know, cloud operations. But now it's a bit different, wherein the finance, business partners, and the business enabling teams need to be actually closely working to, uh, you know, manage this entire uh, FinOps operation. We'll come to the details of FinOps, and uh, we'll speak through it. And before that. Uh, again, coming to a pre-cloud era, it was largely, you know, let us say I'm an engineer working for, let us say, a development life cycle, or possibly, you know, uh, involved in a PM which is actually running a particular workload. So I, as an engineer, I am actually focused only on the VM. Now with the migration to the cloud, I, as an engineer, I am now exposed to multiple services beyond VM. It could be database, it could be AI, ML, BigQuery, and all of these. So as an engineer, I, I may begin to you know, experiment and innovate for good of the organization. But at the end of the time, you know, since these are cloud services, they get consumed by the engineer themselves and uh, you know can essentially help into can get into some build shock situation. That's the reason we have uh, this slide is very important that to make FinOps successful, it needs the entire organization needs to uh, ensure that the, the the cost is actually kept transparent to all the employees and the employees are now moving from an engineering decision making to engineering plus cost conscious decision making which is what is actually uh, the key theme in this uh, slide now now coming to the approaches that we are looking at okay so the approaches are largely of two types uh, on the top of the slide you would see two mechanisms which is being uh, called out one is visualization and one is optimization so op visualization is largely helping the 
sorry for the background. So visualization is largely for helping the customers and the enterprise to make some decisions during the journey and make, make it proactive. Optimization methods are largely cross various services. It could be a compute, it could be a database, it could be a storage. What are the methods to optimize it? And optimize optimization could be on pricing, could be on the product, or could be on the performance itself. So these are two elements on which and the pillars on which we'll have the, the conversation being uh, pivoted around. So to, to talk about visualization, we have first thing is around budgets and alerts. When we spoke, when we speak about budgets and alerts, this is this is the key piece, element around budget uh, around around visualization. So each of the each of the projects in the organization, as shown in different colors in the slide, would can have different budget set and alerts being sent out to the project leads or the engineers involved, so that they they as they essentially understand what is the limit that they have been set across and how are they consuming and how are they faring well. So this is equivalent, let us say, gamification of the entire uh, process and possibly, you know, the CIOs could reward the, the project leads for achieving certain, uh, you know, KPIs that they have set across at the same time, you know, achieving the business goals of cost optimization. So of course, these get reset at the end of the month and the entire cycle starts, in, starts as this. So this can be equivalent you know, from a, from, a, from a retail perspective, we can look at it as data consumption and the and the notifications that we get from our uh, internet service providers or the or the SIM providers that we have. So this is one visualization method. The second method is uh, some services, of course, are basis quota because as we spoke about serverless, right? It could be BigQuery, it could be API Gateway, popularly called as FPG as a service from a Google Cloud standpoint. These are largely from a resource consumption perspective or the number of queries that someone has made or the number of APIs that has been passed across. So we would need to set, set some limits on the quota that can be used and which essentially again sets across uh, you know, limits and the spends and the notifications to the users to manage the cost around it. So these are two visualization methods that we spoke about. One is around budgeting and alerting and second is around quota. Now we will look at the optimization piece of it. So optimization, of course, is a large topic in itself. And uh, you know, partners like Navius have created tools, services, and the entire practices to make it really work across the various workloads that the customers would have subscribed for and make it uh, you know, really uh, working well for the customer. So this is one of the key themes. This is, these are some of the examples that we can think through. One of them, of course, the most common ones, which I'm sure most of you and most of the customers are aware of, is around the various storage class that uh, GCP provides. And the customers, uh, you know, uh, so this graph actually shows the ones in blue are actually the frequently accessed storages, and the ones in yellow and the uh, golden ones are actually the near line and the cold line, which are less frequently or equivalent to an archive backup. So, you know, using the retention rules, the 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 the, the entire data can be moved, or the part of the data can be moved to near line or cold line storage, which essentially gives some cost benefits. So that's what is actually shown on this graph wherein you see the blue one essentially is getting transmitted to the yellow and the golden ones. And the blue essentially subsides as the time progresses and the customer gets the benefit of uh, reduced cost due to near line and cold line storage. So that's on the storage side of it. I'll come to the compute side of it. So as we spoke on the first slide, right, there are about, uh, you know, there, are, there, there, is a, there is a major fear in the enterprises that when you when you actually go up to the cloud, you 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 don't get much benefits, and we see a lot of spend, which is spend getting wasted, which is about twenty to thirty percent, which is which we saw in one of the starting slides. So here it actually shows that we have you know uh, RAM and the CPU being shown on the extreme left, and you realize that the the CPU, which is actually purple in color, is actually underutilized, but the RAM is actually fully utilized. So now is a situation wherein since you have done lift and shift, this is an example of lift and shift from the on to the cloud. And you and you can realize that the RAM is actually fully utilized, but the CPU is a lot of is is a or the a CPU or the or the utilization is far less than needed. So you there is a there is a there's a possibility that the customer can right shape it and reduce the CPU size either using a custom machine type or a different machine in uh, so these are essentially recommended through active assist and the customers can make use of it and uh, do a VM migration to get the benefit of the cost. At the same time, the, the service remains as is. 
So these are two benefits, which we call it as a product-based optimization. We spoke about storage, we spoke about compute. Now we talk about network. So, no. so the earlier one was around product. Now we talk about reference, reference architecture getting changed or refactor of a solution. So this is a solution on the top where you know the orange lines are the ones that are being spoken about. The orange bar essentially refers to the interzonal egress traffic. So let us say Mumbai and Delhi are two regions. There's a lot of egress traffic which is actually flowing between Mumbai and Delhi, which actually can be optimized by a different architecture altogether. So if the customer moves to a multi-cluster architecture within Bombay itself, the the the, int, the, the intra-zone egress traffic was actually close to zero, which is actually being shown on the right side of the slide, wherein the orange uh, bars actually tend to zero. So these are the re-architecture conversations that one could have with the customer, and the customer gets the benefit of reduced egress cost, at least from the interzonal perspective. So this is an example of an optimization using refactor as a solution. The earlier ones were actually uh, optimization using a different product altogether. And then this pricing. Now the various methods to price a solution. And of course, when you come to compute, there are three three base models, which is a which is a committed use discount, sustained use discount. And of course, then you have the uh, uh, the the spot pricing. The spot pricing, of course, is a new one that has been launched pretty recently. Uh, you know, earlier possibly called as preemptable. So in this slide, the red color, you actually see that the customer continues to have, uh, you know, huge consumption of on-demand in the start. But over a period of, say, six months, he begins to realize that he can possibly make a three-year commit because now he gets a hang of what is the amount of compute that he consumes. That's the time you see the red getting reduced over a period of time. And a commit three-year essentially is, uh, you know, getting a steady shape. And the customer gets a benefit of the long-term commit that he does. Apart from that, the golden or the yellow one actually talks about the batch workloads that the customer has, which can be part of uh, a spot VM or a preemptable VM that gives him the real good cost benefit as good as 80 to 90 percent. So from a customer standpoint, he doesn't need to choose one or two. He can essentially choose all the three. And that's uh, that's what is being called on the slide. Now coming to these are essentially services still now what we have spoken services till let us say 2021 and the best practices that we have developed and of course cascaded to the enterprises through nevias and the partners that we have now we are talking of the newer services which again resonate the same philosophy of saving the cost with the customer so we have uh, you know a new uh, service that is being rolled out which is actually a tau vm a tau vm is a new family of virtual vms which actually delivers 42 percent better price performance and this is typically used for scale out workloads now, what does a typical use case look like? The customer can go ahead and, uh, you know, use an N1 or cost optimized or a balanced VM for production. At the same time, use this 42% discount on top VMs for possibly the, uh, the test or the development atmosphere. And the experience for the customer is that this preserves the full, you know, X86 compatibility, which is what the customer wants, and he gets the benefit of the price. So, again, it's a case of, you know, the customer gets a mix of all the three of them and the price advantage for us service. So this is one of the key services that we have launched this year. And of course, we see good consumption across the geography for the service. And moving up the ladder is around the database. We have AlloyDB being launched. So AlloyDB is actually a fully managed uh, open source compatible database engine that supports higher and relational database workloads. Now it can be, you know, it's actually for PostgreSQL. <coughs> can be for PostgreSQL. It's a primarily for a proposed SQL using the power of the disaggregated storage and compute with the intelligence of AI and ML power powered management. One of the key strong points here is actually it has a strong recovery guarantees of for 60 seconds of RTO, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, as low as 60 seconds of RTO and, uh, uh, you know, as low as zero or zero seconds of RPS in an inter-region failover. What it essentially means to the customer, there's no need to you know, think through additional backup restore solutions beyond the managed database that we have brought into the table because everything, each one of them is baked into the solution itself. So again, another cost benefit that the customer can see with this kind of a service and being a relational database in itself. Okay. Uh, the next, uh, we spoke about 
sorry i'm running over time but yeah i'll just complete this piece and then hand it over so we have uh, now we spoke about database we spoke about the the compute now we spoke about now we'll try to speak about the big query and the services around it big query is actually the petabyte petabyte scale serverless solution that we have for uh, data warehousing and these are largely priced on on demand for the number of queries that the customer has or a flat rate the first one the on demand one is, is suitable for the customer who you know who doesn't need who, who may not be aware of the entire entire workload or the or the capacity that he may need and the second one is for the seasoned ones who would have either stayed with us or would know the entire solution and would take a flat rate pricing so that you get the benefit of the cost so these are two solutions that we have now beyond that like we spoke about sud and cud in compute we have a similar combination here so big query the customer may have let us say an example of an election season or an ipl around the corner which is largely seasonal or possibly has a big billion sale like say flipkart or amazon during the or the early so the customer can take flex slots which is actually can be in seconds or minutes or even in hours or days so this is largely for catering to the uh, spiky traffic the customer is going to experience and for the other ones which is the usual workload you can have monthly commits or yearly commits as shown on the right of the slide so again like we have shown about the compute engine BigQuery also has a similar power wherein the customer has a can take the benefit of the both the worlds one is you know as shown on the slide on the bottom of the screen is all the steady workloads marked in blue which are his day-to-day -day workloads and would largely remain the same and is predictable okay the ones shown in green are actually some events that he is forecasting for which he can use the service actually on the flex on the flex model which is the pricing model that we spoke on the earlier slide or it could be a reporting which is you know shown every month or every week which is shown on a red color which is on a flex model so the red and the green can actually go on a flex model the blue and the yellow is largely the steady one which the customer can use the committed one so again it's a mix of both of them and the best of both worlds and the entire service which was actually shown in the earlier slide is actually put together in a cumulative basis uh, in a decreasing order of utilization on the left is actually the committed ones wherein the most of the workload which is committed is shown on the left and then is the monthly and in the right if you say the flex, the flex is actually about 50 percent that means you know the, the 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 purpose of the let us say the event or the anticipated workload is managed through flex at the same time it gets the benefit of the cost as well so this is again another solution that we bring into the table bringing in cost optimization in mind now we, we we ran through a lot of recommendations and best practices now it can be sometimes overwhelming for the customers to you know put what things first and what next so before we go there we essentially need to you know find out you know how to manage the entire ecosystem or how to go about the entire process because it's a continu continuously iterative process so we typically go through you know the best 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 uh, best practice is largely to put together the effort and the savings that is being shown so let us say in this example uh, the second one let us say it takes six two to six weeks let us say is about big query optimization says two to six weeks but at the same time gives you 10 to 20 percent of uh you know savings so the the cio may decide to go go ahead with the second one and first and then go with the others because the optimization the, the straight benefit that it shows in six weeks flat so that's the journey now since we have spoken about all the various possibilities we put together the optimization all in one okay we have the product the pricing and the refactor being put in one put in together so the customers may begin to use the red ones which is waste reduction switching of vms on weekends if it's not usable i know public ips which are a chargeable component not being used switching it off all of them are easy and uh, you know can be done and can see a you know quick impact on the cost reduction being shown on the extreme left but at the same time move to the extreme right on the top is refactor which would essentially mean that some workload needs to go through some changes it could be uh, you know virtualization to containerization and so on and so forth okay this of course uh, we have a detailed slide coming up from the nevs team we'll speak through this and then beyond the conversations that we had we actually continue to innovate and propose best practices to the customer across each one of the workloads that we have 
and give them give the customers the benefit of cost optimization and the best practices that we would recommend so the one that we spoke in the last say 20 minutes is just the you know drop in the ocean and we continue to innovate as we show on the screen next one is around the culture that needs to be done so once we know what's to be done both from reactive and the proactive mechanisms now the next piece is about creating a cost conscious culture okay now because there are so many moving parts and it's not a single person job anymore you need a team internally aligned across eft or work through partners especially specifically like navius who essentially have created intelligent solutions around this with some good use cases already in production and they help you make uh, your journey faster and convenient from a customer standpoint as we spoke we have two options reactive and proactive and it's an iterative process both of them needs to be done one one along the other and the last one from a responsibility perspective on the left is the customer on the right is google google of course continues to feed and respond you know feed in the best practices recommendations that we learn and of course you know keep the customer uh, at the top of mind so that he gets a cost benefit and the optimization on the left is customer continues to reinvest the entire savings that he has got and of course uh, protect themselves from external threats which are of course the norm of the day so we have we have seen customers being more confident in actually committing with gcp if the fear of overspending is actually removed and that becomes more relevant in today's situation and that's the time this conversation is of paramount importance with all your customers uh take them through say 20 minutes and of course taken a bit time more i would like to introduce you mr suraj rao who is actually the customer engineer from new year solutions and he would actually get deeper and help you understand the cost optimization methods by leveraging cloud finops framework which he has been leading through for years of experience across multiple industries and he has put together some good solutions that you should be uh, you know hearing from over to you suraj well thank you so much uh, mr ramchandran for you know sharing great insights and i'm sure our uh, participants has great key takeaways from your session today. Also, thank you so much for introducing uh, our participants to our next speaker. Uh, ladies and gentlemen and all our viewers, uh, it's for me to officially introduce you all to our next speaker, who is the Executive FinOps Customer Engineering at Nivea Solutions. Please welcome Mr. Suraj Rao. Great. over to you suraj we look forward to your thoughts and insights as well all right thank you thank you uh Ravi and Gavina for the warm welcome right and good morning good afternoon good evening to all the attendees that we have here currently with us in the webinar right so uh and and thanks Ravi for the quick introduction and uh, for sharing the valuable insights along with our attendees right so so, uh, so my name is suraj Rav and i'm part of customer engineering team and i hit the uh, cloud pinups vertical here in new solutions all right so you all have you all must have heard about new solutions in in some in some point of time right so we are a google cloud premium partner and we have been awarded as a breakthrough partner of the year 2020 all right so we have our headquarters in temple town Udupi, karnataka and we also have a presence across india and singapore Right. So, and we are a, a strong team of 600 plus engineers working across multiple industries from the FSI sectors, healthcare, automotive, media, and entertainments and digital. Right. And we help our customer. We have enabled our customers in terms of cloud journey from various aspects. Right. That could be application modernization, infrastructure modernization, could be a greenfield or a brownfield migration, and also building an efficient ETL pipeline with the analytical tool keeping in mind the cloud phenomenon's best practices and also the security. Right. So these are the various uh, enterprise level customers that we have heard across, across multiple uh, verticals, right? Starting from TVS, Toyota, Mahindra, from automotive and manufacturing, Dr. Reddy's, uh, um, uh, Wise Healthcare, Health and Glow, Medcall, across healthcare and medicine. And we, we have multiple other enterprise customers across media and entertainment, digital natives and BFSA sectors. Right. So let's take a step back and understand where the organization is heading towards when it comes to cloud journey. Right. Uh, a recent survey which was conducted by Flexera in the late 2021 shows us that 89% of seven, uh, among seven, uh, 753 respondents says that 89% of them would like to explore the multi-cloud. Right, the organization are embracing with the multi-cloud along with the help of hybrid clouds. 
right? The multi-cloud approach is still the facto standard among the organization, right? And when a, when we start to explore more and more multi-cloud opportunities, the, the struggle to control the growing cl cloud spend also increases, right? The, the, the survey says that the it is estimated to spend um, uh, 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 over and above the budget that was estimated, right? Then the, we are looking at a 13% to be spent um, uh, except the original budget, right? And it is expected to increase the cloud spend by 29% year on year. And it's more cr critical than ever to get hands on the forecasting and cost optimization, right? And out of this budgeted amount, it is estimated that 30 to 32% of the cloud is actually a wasted cloud expense, right? And this could be due to a poor governance within the cloud organization. So we understand that most of the organization would like to migrate more and more workload to the cloud, right? They want to shift from the on-prem software to a SaaS solution, right? So this could be a parallel journey, but the optimization of the existing use of the cloud, it still remains the top initiative among the verticals, among the industries in the organization or in the, in the, in the, in the globe, right? So we understand how the cloud is evolving and where are we in terms of cloud expenses and how the, the cloud expense or the wastage of these expenses are growing day by day, right? And it is very important to understand that the traditional IT finance control is a not a, is not key practice or key metrics to actually track your cloud expenses. Because when we talk about the IT, the traditional IT processes, right? So where we'll be having the, our own budget cycle and cost ownership. So we'll be allocating each of this cost to a specific department or a BU head. But when it, when we talk about the cloud, which is a dynamic in nature, and the cost or the consumption will increase based on the migration and the consumption that we'll be doing in the cloud, right? And the budget cycle will actually vary, and the cost of ownership is actually uh, difficult to. Uh, have a, a, a controls within the spend, right? And it is very important to understand that the spend controls that you will be having in the traditional IT is way different than then you will be having in your cloud because of the limited ability of efficiency to control the large OPEX spend, right? And again, the pre uh, predictability and the resource investment to where you can predict your normal uh, uh, workloads that can be hosted in your on premises, and you can have your five year configuration or capacity refresh cycle. Whereas, when we talk about the cloud, right, the forecast variance is actually different because when we look at the cloud, the more and more migration that we do, more and more consumption that we do, the predictability is very different, is very difficult to have in place. And that's the result where we are looking at an increase in cloud wastage, right? So we have uh, two of uh, interesting use case, uh, right? So, um, so we have this business problem where one of our multinational pharmaceutical uh, client who had an um, estimated spend of around $1.2 million wanted to optimize their cost by implementing the FinOps best practices and a framework across 88 project that they had, right? And also have the best practices and framework implemented within the 125 application that they that they had posted on the GCP cloud and also the guardrails to prevent the cloud sprawl detected during the analysis phase, right? And the second use case that we have here is an advertising service company where they wanted to migrate their entire workload from other CSP to GCP to have a cost benefit right, by taking advantage of the GKE clusters and also the MIG clusters to improve their performance and streamline the ETL pipeline, right? So, in, I, I'm, so I'm pretty sure that you all are waiting for the outcome of this uh, case study, right? So I'll be talking about what we have done and what was the outcome of these two case studies at the end of this presentation, just to have that curiosity online within the entire webinar process, right? So. Uh, so you might have heard of a word called muda, right? So muda is a Japanese word meaning wastage, right? And it is a key concept that leans towards the TQM, right? Total quality management. So when we talk about muda, we have to remove this wastage from the entire total quality management process that we have, 
right? And before doing that, let's try to understand what are the various reasons for this mood up or a wastage or a cloud sprawl, right? So many a times we understand that the DevOps or a technical team are more inclined or or more excited about their R&D work, right? And they are more excited to have an innovation in place. As such, they are totally forgotten about the cost implication that they will be having, right? So it's a general understanding for all the technical as well as non-technical team to understand how the various resources in the cloud are priced, all right? And so when we get started with the cloud, it's, it's always a, a subconscious that we usually end up over provisioning, right? So we wanted to ensure that the production setup, all the development are, are, are not, uh, doesn't experience any downtime. So that's how we end up over provisioning the resources at some time, which might increase the cost, right? And also the unscheduled VMs. So we understand that the, that a typical um, a working hours of an employee or, or, or a technical person is nine to 10 hours a day. Right. If that is the case, why do you have to keep your machine running 24 by 7? Right. So post your working hours, it's always better to shut down these virtual machines. Right. Sometimes it is estimated or it is seen that the developers or a tech or a DevOps team leave their virtual machine on 24 by 7, which might lead to increase in cost. Right. And idle resources. Right. So let's look at a uh, uh, application journey. Right. So you will get started with a development environment staging environment and a production. I'm pretty sure that DevOps and the entire technical team are excited to get into production right, without any downtime. As such, you will forget to re uh, downsize the idle machines or terminate the idle machines. right? And plan your reservation, plan your capacity accordingly before you come to the cloud. right? Do not over provision any of the resources and have any capacity unused. right? Then the excess inflow of the logs. So, we want to ensure that the production doesn't stop at any given point of time, right? And even if it does, we need to have a proper log to estimate or to look into the errors, right? So that's when we start injecting uh, excessive of the uh, log flows, which will increase the stack power or which will increase the observability tool pricing, right? And inefficient pricing, right? So we understand, so as a, as a human, uh, right? So if you have a multiple options with us, our mind will definitely go on the roller coaster, right? To, to choose between the cost optimized or a performance optimized, right? So look for various opportunities, look for the various alternatives that we'll be having and compare the price between the multiple resources, right? Often resources. You know that when you deploy a VM, you will be having a VM, a disk, and IP address associated to it, right? Many a time, we see that a VM would be deleted post achieving our objective, right? But the disk which was attached to that VM would still be lying in a, in a cloud premises. And that will definitely increase the cost. Okay? Misusing of the on-demand services, right? So we as a we are always scared to go on, go on with the commitment, right? We, we always look forward for the future. So that's when we start creating a lot and lot of on-demand prices, on-demand services. Right, and we know that there, there are multiple cloud who offers multiple uh, pricing models, starting from on-demand, pay-as-go model, or a commitment. Right, but we, but since we have a short usage of various application and the resources, we start creating on-demand resources that will definitely want to increase the cost. And the problem of too many snapshots. Right, we want to ensure that our data is backed up in the cloud. Right? And we don't afford to lose any of the data. That's when we start creating a lot and lot of snapshots, right? So when you have a couple of uh, or a multiple production releases happening, you want to ensure that you take a backup of your previous setup, ensure that it's uh, it's it's ready, it's it's available as a backup for you, right? And once you have your new production released after a month after testing it, you 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 forget to delete the previous snapshot. And as in when you start having multiple snapshots, it will definitely gonna increase the storage cost. Right? So these are the various aspects or various elements that can bring in a cloud wastage within your cloud utilization or cloud bill. Right. So once we analyze or once we understand that there is a cost wastage happening within my cloud organization, so what are the various potential starting point to the optimization? Right? It's not it's not just before coming into the cloud or it's not just after coming into the cloud, right? So there are various steps or a starting point that we can look at and how Nevis can help 
customers in optimizing these uh, cloud wastage at various intervals or at various starting point. That is one migrating from on-prem to other services, other CSPs to GCPs, right? Or if you want, if you are in phase of modernizing an existing application in the cloud, or optimization can also be done at a regular intervals for your existing application, which is already deployed on the cloud, right? So when we talk about the first scenario, when you are decided to migrate from on-premises server to GCP or any other cloud services. So what is the first key thing that you would like to do? You definitely want to note down your business challenges, right? You want to align your strategic priorities against these business challenges on how you can reduce your infrastructure or a cloud cost, right? And then have the assessment done because you cannot just pick up some random application and then put it into a cloud, right? You want a, a person or, or you want someone to assess your application, your assess your on-premises server and give you the best recommendation and give you the estimated cost, right? So that's when a, a infrastructure discovery tool like status and comes into picture, right? So just allow, just take a deep breath, relax and allow the status zone agent to sit within your on-premises server and do his job. Right, so Stratos Zone will just collect the infrastructure details, start, starting from CPU utilization, RAM utilization, the kind of disk that you're using, the kind of application that you have deployed. Right, it will analyze these, it will gather and analyze these aspects, and the Stratos Zone will do the mapping or the right sizing for you. Right, for example, if you have a two core AGP machine in your on premises, right. That can be running on the Intel, any any platform or any AMD platform, right? But Stato Zone has an intelligent that can help you map your on-premise server to its equivalent in the cloud, right? Thus, you don't end up over provisioning the machine in the GCP, right? And Stato Zone will also give you the asset readiness report, which will identify the end of life or the underperforming host within the on-premise server, right? And the Stratosun also help you with the modernization benefit, right? It will help you which workload can be mapped against which services in the GCP, right? Starting from GCE, Google Compute Engine, or a VMware, or a sole tenant dedicated node for you, right? And the best part of the Stratosun is the TCO benefit. So just run, run the Stratosun assessment within your uh, on-premises server, and you get a TCO benefit report, right? So the TCA benefit report across the cloud service provider versus your on-premise server that you currently have, right? And you might be aware that cloud service provider offers various pricing model, right? starting from pay as you go, commitment for one year and three years. You can also get a report or a comparison report within these three, right? So this is how we can get started if you have uh, on-premise servers and if you want to migrate to GCP, right? And this is how we can uh, make use of status zone assessment tool to understand your uh, uh, in the current setup and this is how we can estimate the reduction in the TC and then you can plan your migration accordingly right and if you have the existing workload in the cloud how do you optimize that scale how do you reduce the cost right so as of you know, as an EVS right so we are looking at three pointers one is a production efficiency where you can take advantage of cloud native services offered by GCP right and the second is a pricing efficiency make use of the discounts make use of the free tiers that you'll be getting right uh, within the google cloud premises and the card rail. it is a very crucial thing to implement the card rails within the google cloud to ensure that the cost doesn't spike up in the near future right so, um, uh, so as you right, mentioned the the amount of savings that you get with the effort is actually different right so as a menu increase effort within the cloud to optimize, you can see a higher savings. You can see the lower savings, right? But if you, so there are multiple things that we can look at, right? As I rightly mentioned, there are idle resources that can be removed. There are, uh, the machines can be resized if you have over provision, looking at a storage lifecycle management. You might be having a lot of data residing in your object storage or, or a big query, right? And, and that data may not be, that, may, that data could be residing in the cloud just for the compliance perspective. If that is a case, it's not necessary that you can store this data at a at a, at a, uh, at a quickly accessible cloud storage uh, uh, storage class. Right? Instead, you can just move it to a lower 
um, storage classes to reduce the storage cost. And again, the custom machine time, right? So GCP is the only service provider that can that can provide the custom machine configuration, right? You can uh, so uh, so let's say you have a requirement of two core and a four GB RAM, right? And it may not be available at a other service provider, but but in GCP you can tweak your RAM count and the CPU count. Thus you can provision exactly what is required for your application, right? And making use of committed use discount. And as Ravi rightly mentioned, we have a big query slot where you can commit on the slot utilization and you can bring down your query cost, right? Also the preemptable machines, re-architecting, shifting from a, 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 a unmanaged hosting to a serverless containerization approach, right? And also taking, making best use of managed services as well, right? So, when we look at a product efficiency, it is very important to know how the pricing structure is done for each of these um, uh, resources, and then um, uh, 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 look at the uh, optimization. Right. So, if you want to have your uh, application auto scale, right. So, look for the Kubernetes services. Look for the managed instance group, so that it will scale up and down depending on your resources, so that you don't end up manually scaling or manually deploying the resources, which might increase the cost. Right. And again, the Google has a very good recommender tool. Right. So it will scan your entire resources and will give the recommendation for the right sizing. Right. And again, as I rightly mentioned, storage lifecycle policies automatically move the data which are no longer required to a lower um, uh, accessible storage classes. Right. To reduce the storage cost. Right. And BigQuery. Right. So uh, it's, um, uh, it's very important to know that. We can either go with a BigQuery slot commitment, or we can have a query limit set, right? Because there are a couple of times where a, a, a developer or, or or a human can run the uh, queries in a parallel, right? And you may not be aware of this, and the cost will definitely want to increase in a bit, right? And also looking at a refactoring, look for the alternatives for your requirement, right? If you want to run your Hadoop clusters on a VM, go with a big query, which is a which has a low maintenance, improved performance, and pay only for the queries, right? So if you have a VM-based application, containerize it so that you can run it in a in a in a GKE clusters, right? So if you have any data that can be stored as an object, right? Go with the cloud storage bucket or a big query rather than going with the persistent disk. Right. If you have a MySQL requirement, go with a Cloud SQL because Cloud SQL is a managed resources from GCP. Right. So you are paying less. Uh, so you might be paying a bit higher, but the, but the management here, the and also the increase in security will will actually improve your dollar per performance. Right. And also looking at a pricing efficiency. Right. So as I rightly mentioned, test your applications. Right, and look for the C3 and a RAM utilization and deploy exactly what is required. Right, if it requires two core, two GB RAM, yes, GCP offers a custom machine, you can do that. If your application needs two core, 624 GB of RAM, yes, you can go with a uh, custom machine, right, and a preemptible machine. If your application is a batch computing or has a fault tolerant workload, you can always look forward for the preemptible machines, right? Which provides up to 80% cheaper and it's a short lived machine, right? Look for the commitment, analyze your workload, make ensure that you're going to run this workload for at least one year or three years, right? And then go, then explore the commitment, right? So, one year commitment will definitely give you 40% savings flat on the list price of a VA and also 57% flat off on a three year commitment, right? And also, Talk to your partners, right? Talk to your partners like Nivea Solutions for the commitment deal, where we can help you with a certain migration credit, specific discounts, and specific escapes, right? So this commitment is actually investing on a Google Cloud, so that you don't uh, face the inflation changes rate, right? Right. And again, looking at the guardrails, it's very important to have the guardrails in place, right? A budget can be set up for your project. Or at a building level, or at a or a group, or at specific resources, right? So that this budget will uh, um, intimate the user, the project owner, about the utilization, about the cost spent in the cloud, right? And also ensure that you have a resource quotas in place within within the project. It is very important to have a quota set, right? So that the user doesn't over provision any of the resources within your project, right? 
So how can Nevis approaches the cloud sprawl? As I rightly mentioned, we educate the DevOps on the cost implication for, for, the, for the usage of the deployed resources, right? It's very important for all the technical uh, 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 personnel to understand the cost implication of what could happen if they deploy the certain resources, right? We check your um, uh, uh, project, we check your de uh, deployment done on the cloud, and we will give you the recommendation if you have any over provisioned resources, right? We will help you with the uh, scheduling of these machines, right? So, so we can bifurcate the production servers, the non-production servers, and have a scheduled policy set on the non-production servers, right? So that could be from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., 9 a.m. to 8 a.m. 8 p.m. Right? In in such scenarios, right, you are saving a cost of, of almost 15 hours per day. That is a savings of up to 60 to 65 percent that we're looking at on a daily basis. Right, so we will analyze your idle resources and we will give you a recommendation to terminate any of these idle resources. Right, we will uh, so Nevis can definitely help you with the capacity planning as well. Right, it's, it's always important to understand what is required for my application and plan for the capacity. Right, and again, the, the crucial thing, right? So we usually are excited to move to the production and we want all the logs to be ingested so that if something goes wrong in the production i can quickly get into this log and check for the error right disable the irrelevant uh, logs it's not necessary to have all the logs in place right and all and allow just the application critical or infrastructure critical logs for you to test out certain certain errors yeah, in such scenarios you are keeping a check on the on the on the, on the observation tool that we have in cloud right check for the alternate resources that can be deployed at optimal cost right so if you have if, if you're looking at a compute engine check for the serverless computing as well where you can reduce your overhead of managing this infrastructure at a reduced cost right delete the instances or resources which are no longer required right that could be a, a disk ip addresses or, or 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 a cdn deployment load balancer deployed so delete these resources which are no longer required right misusing of on-demand services again explore the result instances right and so as a partner like nevis can help you analyze your entire workload and help you with the reservation right so it's very important to have the reservation because when you're sure about your workload are going to run for one year and three years right so explore the reservation instances reserved instances also these spot instances if you have uh, any workload which are batch processing nature and has a fault tolerant, right? So delete the snapshot, which are no longer required. So the generic recommendation is to delete snapshot, which is over and above 1.5 months, year, month old or, or two months old. Right? And I'm pretty sure that you all were waiting for this particular slide, right? So what was the outcome uh, or how Nevis has helped this pharmaceutical company to optimize their cost, right? So based on the cloud FinOps best practices that we have, based on the tools that we have in, within the Nimi solutions, so we were able to right size more than 50 machines, virtual machines across 88 projects, right? And we, uh, we were able to terminate over 100 plus idle resources. And we have set up 70 plus budgets and alerts to control the cloud sprawl, right? And we have put 50 plus virtual machine within the scheduled policies. So by looking at this right sizing and idle resources, so we were able to save around $75,000 annually. And, and that's a huge cost that we're looking at, right? And once we do the um, right sizing, terminate the idle resources, once we have the cloud refined, right? Then we have to definitely look towards the commitment, right? And a proposed and sa uh, savings annually from a three-year commitment were more than $100,000, right? And coming to the outcome of second use uh, case studies that we have is the advertising service case studies, right? Where we were able to migrate more than 100 plus virtual machine within a, spot, a short span by using the uh, migration tool as a as a as a as a uh, status zone, right? And we were able to convert their normal instances to spot instances by closely analyzing their type of or kind of um, application that they hosted on the cloud, right? And the estimated TCS savings from migrating from other CSP to GCP was was seen around forty two percent month on month, right? And twenty seven percent of the cost savings were seen 
only from the commitment, right? So the customer had proceeded with a three-year commitment and we were able to see a 27% savings on the VM cost. Okay. So why Nevis is a differentiator in terms of FinOps, right? Again, as rightly mentioned, so we are a partner, so we are a, uh, a premium partner and we have awarded with a partner of the year breakthrough uh, 2020, right? And we have a specialization within the application development and infrastructure so that we can help you with analyzing application optimization, also with infrastructure optimization. Put together, we can help you implement the FinOps best practices and the framework and the guardrails, right? So Nevis have their own, so we have our own OptiSpend uh, da dashboard, uh, a, a dedicated tool, which will be used by FinOps, the entire team for discovery and optimization, right? And the, and the army of 200 plus certified engineers on the Google Cloud will definitely be at a doorstep whether that be a, a migration or whether that be a modernization, whether that be a security implementation or even the optimization, right? So, so, so that was all from, from my end. I think we uh, we can take up the Q&A session now. Well, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Suraj. That was really informative and an interesting session, I must say. Uh, I think now without any further delay, we uh, take up the uh, before we take the first question, uh, just encourage our uh, participants. Uh, you know, if you have any questions, please type Q and A section. Uh, Mr. Ravi, as well as Mr. Suraj, will be more than glad to answer questions. So we have uh, a couple of questions with us. Let me just ask you uh, the first one that uh, one of the participants has put forth. Uh, the question is as follows. What are some pitfalls to know optimizing infrastructure on cloud? I'll repeat. Okay. What are okay. some pitfalls to note with optimizing infrastructure on cloud? So right, it is very important to understand the nature of the application and how we have deployed our workloads on the, on the cloud, right? And as rightly mentioned, there are a lot of pitfalls, there are a lot of uh, um, uh, cloud sprawl that happening due to multiple reasons, right? So starting from, we first have to educate the, our entire team within our organization, ensure that you know, everyone are aware of the cloud implication that they're currently having, right? And again, this optimization is not a one-time activity. It has to be a recurring activity, right? I might have the uh, refined or optimized workload today, but tomorrow again, there will be a over provision resources. There will be a idle resources being deployed, right? I need to ensure that this optimization is in line or is an recurring activity to avoid this pitfall, to avoid this cloud problem. Yeah, so saying it's a recurring uh, process, you've got to keep at it uh, so that the pitfalls don't happen. All right, thank you for your answer. Uh, we've got one more question coming in. Uh, this question is as follows. Does Tracker Zone have any data security measures integrated? Yes. So Stratos Zone definitely has a security uh, policies integrated, right? So Stratos Zone is a HIPAA compliant by default, right? So there's nothing to worry about your data being stored in the Stratos Zone cloud. And the second thing is the Stratos Zone is an agent which collects only the infrastructure details, right? Starting from CPU utilization, RAM utilization, the kind of resources, the kind of disk that, disk that you have, and also the kind of um, 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 operating system that you have deployed, right? It doesn't collect any application data, right? And if you can even mask any of the data which you don't like to share with your partners, right? So that's, a, that's another thing. So we are, the, the, the shutter zone is a HIPAA compliant. You have a flexibility to to choose which data has to be shared with the customer, right? And by default, Statosum will delete any of the data that you have stored within 30 days period of time. Oh, that, that's very assuring. That's also a very good security feature. I'm sure all the participating audience are looking forward, you know, to use that and integrate it in their systems as well. Uh, one more question, uh, which is compared to the other providers, what does GCP cost optimization services bring for small enterprises? All right. So, Ravi, um, um, so feel free to pitch in. Right. So, so when we talk about the optimization for the small scale enterprise or or any enterprises, right? So, as I rightly mentioned, Google has brought in a lot of um, um, infrastructure changes and has brought a lot of features in terms of optimization and also the tool, right? 
the, the one of the Google offer tool is a VM recommended or a recommendation tool, right? Where it can definitely analyze your workload uh, for, for a period of 15 days. And it can give you multiple recommendations, starting from right sizing, if you have over provisioned it, remove any of the resources, if you have any idle resources deployed, or some re uh, resources, or it will give you the recommendation to go ahead with the commitment, right? It will ensure that you do not over provision the commitment, right? That's another thing. And also a partner like Nebius, where we have our own in-house tool to actually have this recommendation details, have this all this recommendation details, including the cost report at one single dashboard, right? So we have a tool called Optis, and we have a multiple customized script that can be run at your end to get these details and go ahead with proceed with the optimization. Well, thank you, Suraj, for your answer. Uh, Mr. Ravi, would you like to add anything to that? See, Suraj has co co covered pretty much about it, and of course, I'll share the details of uh, you know the, the 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 specifics that are being sought across over the email. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, well, for now, these were the only questions asked. We'll wait a couple of minutes just to see if we have any more incoming questions. Well, looks like Mr. Ravi and Mr. Suraj have pretty much covered everything in the session. You know, whenever there are, there are questions, it's either the case of people have understood everything or people have not understood anything. And we hope it's the former case where everybody has understood. Everything. And so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, with this, we bring today's session to a close. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Ravi and Suraj for uh, taking your time out and sharing your insights and experiences and also answering this question patiently. Uh, this session wouldn't have been possible without the participation of all RSP speakers and delegates. I would like to thank each one of you, uh, the people who have joined us online, for taking your time out and being a part of this webinar. A special thank to Nations and Google Cloud for their support to this initiative, without whom this webinar wouldn't have been possible. Thank you once again, ladies and gentlemen. Take care and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.